Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here and today I've got a very exciting video for you guys. We are going to be looking at Dynamo for Revit. This has been a highly requested topic. Um, this, is, this video is going to be completely for beginners. Um, so if you don't have any experience with it, that's fine. And we're actually going to be generating a very powerful example, something that you can use every day in Revit, especially if you're an architectural assistant. This is something I need to do quite a bit. So here you can see we've got quite a few trees um, that are placed. They're all um, copy and pasted, but right now they all look the same. In the render, this will look odd. It'd be nice if we can randomly um, rotate these, right? And that's exactly what the script does. So the moment I make this automatic, you can see they've all rotated. But let's say I don't like the way they're rotated. Well here, I can just scroll through and until I get a number that I like, or until I get a shuffle that I like, and then we can do this. Say if I only want these three to be rotated, that's fine. With Dynamo, we can just hit select here. There we go. And now I can choose to rotate only these ones. Same thing as before. So if I wanted to these ones to rotate, there we go. Now these ones have updated. This is such a useful script in terms of something you can use later on. And it's also going to explain the fundamentals of why you should start learning Dynamo. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy this video, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like and let's get into it. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with in Revit. For my current file, I have um, these Enscape trees. These are something I've had to rotate before in the past for a common task. You can use whatever type of um, family you want as long as you place it, even a table's fine. Um, just follow through with the example. And what we first want to do is load up Dynamo, right? So you find Dynamo in the Manage tab here, and then Dynamo under this Visual Programming part. So the first time you open Dynamo, you might be asked something saying, hey, you need to accept these terms, or do you know what a Dynamo is? Just carry on with it. Um, this is something that's actually installed part of Revit. It's part of Autodesk, so it's nothing suspicious. Don't worry. And first of all, what we want to do is we want to click on this new tab here. Great. So now we've launched Dynamo together. I just want to explain what, how Dynamo works before you get into it. Don't worry about um, following through, the, through with this. I mean, you can if you want, but I just want to explain how Dynamo works in terms of the rough logic, right? So how Dynamo works is that it works as a flow of logics going from input to output, right? So here, as an example, if I have a number 20 here, and then I have the number 30 here, there we go. I'm gonna get into code box in the future, don't worry. But if I go here and I just write the word X plus Y, there we go. And here you can see that the moment I plug in 20 to X and 30 to Y, if I go to my output, and for those of you that don't know how to go to the output, all you need to do is just hover over this um, arrow button. And then here you can see we've got this number 50 that's showing. If I hover away from it, 50 doesn't show. But if I want 50 to show continuously, all I have to do is hover over it, go down, and then you can see this pin button. There we go. So we're now constantly pinning our output in case you want to see it. And all essentially Dynamo is doing is a flow of logic. So everything we enter from the left is going to be shown on the right as long as the nodes are connected. We can connect Revit elements, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a bit, but um, this is just the basics of Dynamo. So on the left, what you have, and on the right, are these things called code blocks. And in the middle, we have these wires. This is like a flow of information. If I took out Y from here, you can see nothing's um, being filled in here, right? If I push this back there, and if I updated 30 to say 50, there we go, we can see it's updated in real time. Say if I wanted this number to be divided by 2, well, I can just write x divided by 2 there we go and now if i do the same thing where i pin this here and now if i push this output which is 70 into here you can see we get 35. if i made this one here 10 you can see this now becomes 30 or this becomes 60 to 30. everything we're doing here is a flow of information so what we're going to do is we're going to set up some rules to select some revit elements generate a few things and then have it so that it can automatically rotate for us okay you may have noticed that everything's updating in real time. Over here at the bottom, you can see this automatic mode and manual mode. When you're working with something simple like this tutorial, automatic means everything we do in Dynamo here is gonna be updated automatically, as well as the changes that are pushed to Revit. If you're dealing with a very heavy Dynamo scene, which we will um, later on in the future, you can go to this manual mode. Make sure you're familiar with these two modes. So here, if I made this number 100, you can see nothing's updated. That's because it wasn't set to automatic. The flow of information hasn't been set yet because we haven't hit run. So everything's paused for now. The moment I hit run, there we go. It goes from 110 to 55. That's one thing to keep in mind, all right? Okay, and one thing I forgot to explain is how to navigate in Dynamo. It's very similar to Revit. So if you want to start panning around in Dynamo, all you have to do is hold down your middle mouse button and move your mouse. And if you want to zoom in and out, you just use your mouse wheel, right? Scroll in and out. Fantastic. And if you want to unconnect a wire, all you have to do is just click on it once. There you go. And the moment it's in this state, you can just left click and it's gone. The moment you want to connect a wire, you just have to select on one of these um, output parts here. There we go. Left click 
and now you've got this wire and then you can choose where to input it. So here, once it's attached there, as soon as I left click, we're done. Great. So in terms of selecting our Revit element, let's just push one side here. To, let's push Dynamo to one side here on our screen. There we go. And let's push Revit there. Okay. The first thing we want to do is select our Revit element. Um, for this beginning tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to go through all these lists that will come later on. We're just going to use the search button for now. So here, I'm just going to write select model. I can begin writing it. You see, we get two options. The first one says select model element. And this is, and if you hover over it, you can see it says select a model element from the document. Because we want to select multiple in this case, we want to select the second one. And now once I've hit select, all you can do is select all of these trees. There we go. And because I'm in manual mode, or even if you're in manual or automatic, you'll see this one update. For now, I'm going to switch to the automatic mode. Okay, there we go. And because we've selected this, I'm going to push this to be full screen. Great. So now what I want to do is, so I want to set the rotation of these stuff in Revit. And in order to do that, I just need the set rotation node. There we go. Don't worry if you're not familiar with all of these nodes here. The more you use Dynamo, um, the more um, familiar you'll get, and uh, the more intuitive it will become. Don't worry. Um, this is learning a new skill. You're essentially learning programming or visual programming. This is kind of a step beyond Revit, where you're learning programming in a fun environment, in a very visual environment that you can then connect back into Revit. So here, you can see we have two inputs here, right? Here, this says family instance, which is essentially all of our elements and the degree. So what this node is saying is that, hey, you need to give me two stuff. One, the elements, and the second part is the amount on how much I'm gonna rotate them. So if I put this here, all these elements, and if I double click on this to make it a bit smaller, or if I just, um, if I just push this to the side here, let me just resize it on my window, there we go. If I went here and I double, if I wrote the word number here now, to get an input, you can see we have loads of things to do with number. At the top, it says input. This is the one we want. If I made this 50 and I inputted this node to this one with the flow of logic, as I said before, and the fact that it's automatic, it's going to rotate all these elements 50 degrees, right, on their own axis. So if I made this number, let's say 70, you can see it updates here. Same thing as if we want to reset it back to zero. The moment I hit zero, it's done. This is how Dynamo works. It's a flow of logic going from left to right, and we need the information filled in with these nodes, right? So in order to randomize these rotations, as you can see here, if I hover over this, right? And if I pin this, you can see we have a bunch of elements. These are all our Enscape um, assets that we've selected. At the bottom here, you can see the number 16. If I unpin that and I hover over it, you can also see it says 16. What that means is, is that it has 16 elements in our current selection or our current list, right? So here, what I need is 16 random numbers, okay? Because I have 16 elements, and if I want these all to be random, I have to generate 16 random numbers. What I can do here is if I go to the search button, and if I write the word random, oh, let me get rid of the word number, the, the word number, yep. Yeah. And now what I want is the one that says random list, the one that I want is, you're going to see two. One says random list, and all your input is an amount. Here you can see it says it produces numbers from the range zero to one. I don't want that. I want the one that says random list that has amount, value one, value two, and seed. The moment you click on that, we've dropped that node, okay? What this node is going to do for us is it's going to generate a bunch of random numbers for us and in a range. So if we want it to rotate around um, one circle, which is 360 degrees, what we need to do is we need to input a number between zero and 360, right? So if I go here and if I write, go up to the top and if I write number here, there we go. Basic input number. The amount, like I said before, we had 16. So if I make this number 16, there we go. Connect that there to there. Control C, Control V to copy the node. Same again. Here, I want to make the number start from zero and I want this number to be 360. So this is going to say the rotation can be anywhere from 0 to 360, which is a full circle, right? So there and there. Great. So here we have one more input to fill in, and this one is the seed. Think of seed as a random shuffle, right? So what this is going to do is generate a random list. And you know how you can have, um, when, when things are random, you can shuffle them once or twice to get a different results or different um, sequence of random elements. This is what this will do. So if I go here and if I write, instead of number, let me write integer for a whole number, just to simplify it. There we go. So we're already messing around with a few nodes. If I input this to this, now if I hover over number and I pin it, 
Here you can see we've got a bunch of random numbers generated for us, right? I'm going to make this um, full screen for now just so it's easier to see. If I slide over this, if I make this from 1 to 2, you can see it's shuffled the numbers again. from the, um, And it's not just shuffling this list, it's regenerating them. That's what this um, shuffle thing does in terms of random. You're saying, okay, I want to, I want to shuffle the um, output again and again. So here you can either do 1 to 3 or you can use a slider bar that we have in Dynamo. That's what I've shown before. Now, because we have all these numbers here that are to loads of decimal places, because, I mean, this is working the way it was said. It said it's going to generate any number between this 0 and 360. With Revit, we deal with round numbers because it's just going to make it a lot nicer. So instead of going integer, let's go here and write the word round. And what we want to do is we want to fill in this node that says um, round, which is here, round number, right? So the moment we push this here, the moment I push in number to number and I click on this output here, you can see it's rounded all of our numbers. And whether I change these numbers or the input, you can see it's updating, right? And because I've got 16 elements here and I've got 16 random numbers, if I minimize this and I go back to Revit, watch what happens. So if I go here and I connect number to degree, there we go. We can see these have all rotated randomly. If I go back here now, and like I said, this is a flow of logic. So the moment I edit something on the left hand side, this flow of logic is going to continue because these wires are connected. So the moment I move all of this, look at that, all of our elements are rotating randomly for us. We could choose any type of element. Like I said, this didn't have to be Enscape trees and it didn't have to be 16 elements. Say, for example, if I wanted to um, add two more elements here, right? If I go here and I hit copy, and now if I select all my elements again, there we go, we can see it's updated. And here we can see, um, if I go over it, you can see it says 18 now. Now if I rotate this, watch what happens. Here we can see the last two haven't been added even though we've selected them. This is because we set the number to generate 16 numbers instead of 18. It'd be nice if we can automate this, and we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional set of logic. And what I want it to do, I want this number to be exactly what the number is here. And I can do that just by counting the amount of elements that I've selected. So up here, all I have to do is just hit the, all I have to do is go up here and write the word count. The one with the fingers here returns a number of items stored in the given list or our selection. There we go. And if I, and if I put elements into list and I hover over it, you can see it says 18 now. So instead of this number being 16, if I delete that, if I now connect this integer or this output, which is 18 into the amount. There we go. We can now see that these elements are now rotating with the rest of the script. Same thing if I went here and I only wanted to select these four, right? So here I've selected four elements. If I hover over this, we can see it says four. Four numbers are generated, four numbers are rounded, and four elements are set to rotation. So there we go. So the moment I move this up or down, there we go. If I did make this manual and then I decide to change this, there we go. And then if I hit run again, now you see the update. And there you guys have it, your first ever Dynamo script that you can use again and again on other projects. You can swap these trees for people, for furniture, whatever you need. Um, imagine having to do this again and again on every project, it'd be a bit of a ball ache. So you can actually save the script as well. All you have to do is go to file, save as, and then you're just gonna save this whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna call it randomly rotate. There we go, it's a .dyn extension for you to find out again in the future. Once it's saved, all you can do is just go file, open and then choose what you called it here so there we go and yeah that's it guys if you did enjoy this video and you want more please let me know down below in the comments as always feel free to support this video with a like it helps me out a lot take care cheers